Alrighty guys, welcome back. This is the GST IDC. We are in semi-final final number one. This is iZone up against Pacific. Two Filipino teams and GST IDC has quickly become an all Filipino affair. We have got iZone and Pacific in this semi-final and the other semi-final is going to be Dreams up against MSI Evolution Gaming Team. Okay, and uh, yeah, I mean, all Filipino teams left, top four, all Filipinos, guys. So once again, Pinoy dominance. Last month, it was only Orange who could upset the Pinos. They were the one team to take them down, but this month, they did fall to Dreams and left. In the tournament, it's going to be iZone and Pacific in this semifinal. Dreams and MSI on the other. This game, we've got iZone over on the central side, Pacific on the Scourge team. They've got the first pick, first ban, banning out the Earthshaker, the Shadow Demon, and we see iZone banning out the Naga Siren, Templar Assassin. Naga Siren, as per usual, not making it anywhere near the ban and pick stage of the pool. Hello to all you guys in your chat. Everyone's saying, give such and such a shout out. Say shout out to this team. Well, shout out to everyone in the chat right now and everyone who is viewing this game tuned in live on stream because you guys are making GESC IDC successful. You guys are the reason it comes back every month and you guys are absolutely a lot of fun as well. So anyways, guys, we are going to have this semi-final underway. We'll see what Pacific want to ban out right now with their last few bans and picks. I will just... Update my Facebook quickly. And hopefully there are no more technical problems with any teams. There were some problems earlier on with the Bad Burn game when uh, Bad Burn disconnected, couldn't couldn't really reload the save, had some problems there. And uh, Pacific banning up the Queen of Pain with their third ban. Darks are getting banned as well. And we see Lycan getting through and being instantly grabbed up by Pacific as their first pick. And we'll see how they want to play this, how they want to lane this. A very scary early to mid game pushing hero and a hero with some late game carry potential as well Though he does get beat by some other late game carries who do have that hard right click damage But we'll see how it is going to be played as right now We are going to see what eyes want to pick up. How are they going to deal with the Pacific like and we've seen a few teams use Beastmaster already So they may want to go with the Beastmaster here uh, We'll see if that's the uh, the route they want to take as uh, we, I think it was Badburn who actually used him. We didn't actually end up seeing all of that game because of the disconnection problem, but it was a hero to look out for, and we'll see what eyes I want to get here. Winner is still in the pool. Likely see them go for that win round nice and early on, and a lot of those sort of trademark heroes like the Bottle Crow heroes, Queen of Pain, Templar Assassin being taken out. Tiny still in the pool, as is uh, the DK. Maybe going to go for a DK. That is a long stun on DK, so before Lycan has his BKB, I mean, he's a melee hero. He has to come up close to get those stuns off. Uh, but it is going to be a Beastmaster pick up for iZone. Going to help get some lockdown to deal with that Lycan. And we're going to see what Pacific want to get with their second and third picks here. Probably just pick up a couple of support heroes here for their team. The ES has been banned out. So we may see something like a Crystal Maiden with some other hero. We could even see a Rubik getting through. Um, Shadow Demon also being banned. So a lot of the popular support heroes in those aggressive tri -lines. I mean, we see a lot of ES tri -lines, Shadow Demon tri -lines. Um, but we're going to see Crystal Maiden, maybe even a Sand King here, which is another popular support hero for those tri -lanes. What are they going to pick up here, guys? We are going to wait, have to wait and see. But right now, things getting underway as... Uh, there we go. Sand King it is. Okay, third pick Sand King. Could be a solo, though. We've seen it used as both solo and support. But I have a feeling it's just going to be a support here for that trial. And the Sea and the Sand King with one of the heroes for the trial. And actually, it depends. It depends how they want to do this Lycan. Is Lycan going to be in the trial? Is Lycan going to be a solo hero? Or is he going to be in the jungle? Um, it's They can really do a lot of things with this draft with hero, the hero like Lycan, not to mention uh, the Sand King as well. Of course, Crystal Maiden, the sort of trademark support hero. And Izone going to go the Weaver. We've seen a few Weavers the last uh, couple of days. And uh, it's been a hero that's had fairly decent success i mean it's come out on top more often than not and uh, with that eye zone they don't have any support heroes yet so we're going to see all those supports popular supports being banned out as they've got the side lane solo winner the solo mid beastmaster the weaver who's probably going to go into that safe lane at bottom unless they do in fact want to do the trial and guys to everyone spamming go full screen well it'll go full screen by the time the game starts in fact you can see the bands and picks better because i've, I've made the bands and picks area bigger if this was in your full screen mode, it would be quite small in the corner. So I've actually made it bigger than it would be otherwise. So don't freak out. And uh, the full screen will happen once the game actually starts. But anyways, we're going to see some support heroes being banned out. And the Ancient Apparition as well as the Chen. 
and we'll see how they want to use this weaver pick it is a hero that, i mean they can put it in a trial lane and top and put the winner at bottom or they could just put it in the safe lane in a trial lane there at the same time they can put weaver solo do the winner as a trial lane so even iso even not having picked up any support heroes yet they still have different options to who they want to put in the trial lane where they want to put their trial lane so both teams are still going to be left thinking, scratching their heads, thinking, what do the other team want to do? Pandora and Brewmaster being banned out. I like this bandit. Would it, it, it's a hero that would work well with the Lycan. You can throw, you can use the Cyclone and heroes that can sort of annoy the Lycan, like either the Winner or the Beastmaster, those hard to kill heroes, the heroes with the long disables. Throw them up near the Cyclone, then stun a different target, stun those squishy supports, and let Lycan go to town on them, right clicking away. So we're going to see just what they want to get as uh, the fourth pick is going to be a tiny so tiny likely to be the solar myth pacific and that is a hero i always have a lot of fun whenever we see it so glad that it has made its way through the pool here as i am just looking for something i was about to say i'm like i'm sure i have another water bottle somewhere i definitely bought two this morning i've only gone through one we've gone through one I'm just opening up the uh my my final bowl of water i may have to go get some snacks or even some proper lunch after this game guys as it is me getting pretty hungry after casting since what midday-ish midday yeah a bit before midday am i disappointed that Maneski lost i'm not disappointed I, I mean they're one of my favorite teams but it's not one of those things where i think oh man Maneski lost they versed a team who were better on the day who deserved who in the end deserved the win and uh, we are going to see a rubik being picked up as the support hero for eye zone uh, a hero that, uh, wasn't really all that popular when he first came out but now lately with whenever the sort of more popular supports being taken the shadow demon the earth shaker um, the crystal main have been picked up rubik's getting more and more play as a support hero so we'll see um how he is going to be used as oh, wheelie chairs are not safe kids do not play on wheelie chairs and uh, now the last pick for pacific we're going to know a bit more about what they want to do is lycan going to be in jungle is probably the the probably the most relevant question for them do they put the lycan as a solo or in a tri lane or do they just say okay let's chuck him in the jungle and run some kind of dual lane if they want to run the dual lane they'll need to either put the Sand King solo or pick up another solo hero. And even if they pick up another solo hero, then you've got a CM with a Sand King as a dual lane, which is, eh, it's not a bad, bad thing, but it is something a bit interesting as uh, we're going to have We're going to have a Death Prophet. Whoa, 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 Death Prophet. Where'd that come from? So Death Prophet would likely be a solo hero here. So that means maybe um, CM and Sankin could be laying together with the Lycan in jungle, or even the Lycan in lane. We'll have to see just what they want to do here. <laughs> have some decency, guys. You're, you're preaching. You're preaching to the wrong people. I have to say, Borlog, you're just preaching to the wrong people. We've got the last pick coming for Eyes, and we'll have to see what they want to go with here. And uh, they are saying, "Oops, set latency, set latency, set latency." All right, you guys can have your latency. There we go. And we're going to hop into this game now as uh, the bands and picks, they're almost done. As right now, we have got a final oh-so-important pick for Izone. and likely just to be a support hero unless they want to run that winner as a support. Or they could get some kind of a jungle hero here. But for the most part, I'm thinking we're going to see... Oh, no, it is going to be an invoker. So winner and likely to be a support hero. Invoker comes out. That is not something I was quite expecting here. And we'll see just how they plan on using that as it is going to be over on the central side we have got representing the philippines as every team left in this this tournament is four filipino teams this team in the semi-final we have got i zone one two five we've got jove insanity on the invoking on the invoker we've got kells on the winner and we've got paleng on the win runner on the, sorry on the weaver winner and weaver and then we've got the rubik being played by froggy And we've got the Beastmaster being played by Reborn at bottom lane. <laughs> no need to panic, guys. I've already said it. I've already said it. And we've got over on the skirt side, Pacific Revitalized. We have got Nikau playing the Death Prophet, the Chaos Knight from last game. We've got Tiny being played by Santino, the Child Wonder, the Child Prodigy. The child Dota God, and we've got at bottom lane, we've got the Captain Lowy on the Sand King, laning with the Crystal Maiden of EMZ, and Lycan being played by Zal. So running this trial lane at bottom, they're going to be up against a solo, uh, that's not Invoker, sorry, it's solo Beastmaster. Invoker's at mid, so that's a pretty easy lane for this Lycan to get some nice farm, um, and we're going to see just how they look to use that to, for their advantage as meanwhile. 
quick pause comes out as both these teams making sure they are in fact ready, got everything sorted. Try, maybe a bit of lag these two teams. Oh, they can go themselves. So Windrunner, Weaver, Rubik, interesting trialing coming up from these ones. We've got Rubik as a support as well as Windrunner. Windrunner doing some warding. He's gonna be blocking some of these camps, maybe he has already blocked this camp. Is he gonna block another one here? No, he's just gonna put it on the high ground, get some vision into the jungle here, but like an axe at bottom. I'm not sure whether or not they're expecting this. They're maybe expecting that Lycan to be top. They think, okay, they're going to put Lycan trial on top. Let's put our own trial on. But Lycan is going to find a solo Beastmaster. This is such a good lane for Lycan. They don't even need a trial in here. They could just leave the Sand King to go roam and do the Crystal Maiden with the Lycan. They've got plenty of options. As uh, right now, we're going to see mid lane. Invoker is going to be up against the Tiny. That's a tough lane for Tiny. He's got less than one armor. And that's only, he's only got more than, more than zero because of those three branches. Invoker with big base damage, a lot of harass can come out from him. And there we go. Beastmaster sees Lycan and thinks, oh crap, this Lycan probably going to farm quite a bit. Top lane though, they can shut down the Death Prop a bit. Death Prop's going to have to play very far back. Look to spam that wave as much as possible, not get caught out. As uh, they are looking to go in, looking to harass him. They'll, they'll carry and swarm. He's already got three or four creep kills. So nice early start for the Krob, who is going to be doing some bottle crowing. And that bottle is going to count get up pretty quickly by the looks of things as Nikau already at 560 gold mid lane tiny 300 gold will be rushing a ball as well but not not so much going the eco build that the death prophet is going and uh, we are going to see Lycan looking to get that early levels and farm to help him out get up that fast basset ring and then try to get that Vlad's maybe even a medallion up as well nice and quick mid lane Santino getting some denies off up to five creep kills as well as a deny only three and zero on the invoke so nice start for tiny Still early pickings as Lycan at, bo at, at bottom. Three and three. Beastmaster looks like he's getting some CSE. He's up to four creep kills just by spamming those axes. Or by spamming, I mean using them twice. As that is the extent of his mana for the moment. He will be able to regen some soon uh, because of all these branches he's got. But for now, he cannot use any more. And he will be hard to farm. There's a Nova going down. They got a Frostbite. No, they don't. Crystal Maiden still level one. But Sanking will stun on him. They do get a bit of a surround and a block going on with these wolves. Sanking trying to block. Is there enough damage? They're going to need another Frostbite. Couple more right clicks. They need Crystal Maiden. Just hits level two. And Crystal Maiden looking for this kill. Does have the Frostbite as well as a Nova now, I assume. And it looks like Beastmaster may go down. There's a Frostbite. There's the first blood. Goes to the Beastmaster. Sanking comes in with a stun. Great play from Beastmaster. He did survive and he was rushed. Pacific went in before they had the level 2 on Crystal Maiden. They needed both Nova and Frostbite. And in the end, first blood went to the Beastmaster. He's going to be so happy with himself there. Reborn, or UA, as he's known. The former MSI player. Off to a great start, guys, as we are going to see Zyle the Lycan looking to continue his farm. And meanwhile, top lane, Death Prophet doing a bit of pulling here to the side. It's going to have that bottle being couriered out. It is now flying career. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. It looks like a chaos meter was dropped at mid. So not going for your typical cold snap exhort invoker. You often get the uh, exhort and use sunstrike and cold snap as your two main spells. He's gone for the chaos media. So the big damage coming from that. Tiny going to need that bottle. It's going to be flying out soon, I imagine. Um, you know, it's sitting at base. He's waiting maybe for the flying courier. As he does need to be careful. Invoker is sitting on about 170 mine depending on what spell he has if he gets a couple right clicks with a sunstrike that could be a kill he gets one right click a sunstrike there could be enough damage he needs to be careful the t the uh, courier will go flying out now with the bottle but at the same time tiny gonna have to be very careful with the positioning maybe not enough damage now the level two exhort i think it's about 130 damage bottom lane though crystal main with the like and looking for this kill beastmaster bottling up yeah, it gets cancelled. Both bottles a couple of times get cancelled. Now, like, and those wolves are going to be fast. Line. Beastmaster will go down. It's a question of who gets a kill. It is Zyle trying to deny himself to those neutrals. Not going to happen. And now even Lycan using that for a bit of farming here. Sanking was at mid. Decides to go back bottom. Try to get that level 3. Crystal Maiden. Just level 2 still. So he isn't getting any XP for these kills. But Lycan getting solo XP. Some solo farm as well. Going to be pretty happy with how that went. Getting the kill there. And Death Prophet at top. Doing some pulling here, only hitting level 2 here because of this aggressive trialing. Look at this, they're skipping around the creep camp. I zone looking to put a lot of pressure on here and make sure that they can really prevent them from doing too much. Speaking of doing too much, Joven Sanity at mid lane. Invoker gets a solo kill on Santino. We've got Joven up against Santino at mid. The two all-star players and right now Joven is up. One kill to zero, has 23 CS as well. Great start for him as meanwhile top lane Weaver 21 CS. Bottom lane Beastmaster has got the first blood, only 10 CS there. About to hit up his number 11th and 12th, but definitely doing pretty well here for the most part. And he is even going to clean up a couple of wolves here, so that's going to give him some additional gold. As mid lane, we may see a bit of a roam coming in from the Sanking, who now has level 3. We'll have that level 2 stun. Beastmaster bringing out a magic wand with 
a potential bottle crow opportunity if he wants to send that back to base now. And uh, top lane, Death Prophet still struggling. Has managed to reach level three, but this top tier one tower is gonna go down already. And here we go, the pullback, the shackle. Weaver gonna come in. This is not a good situation for Death Prophet. I don't know if there's enough damage, so they're trying to do some body blocking. Meanwhile, Jovin gets another kill on Santino at mid, and Weaver is looking to maybe get this kill. The nuke comes out, the power shot. Kells gets the kill, and meanwhile, mid lane, Jovin gets his second kill of the game. Solo kill at mid. Santino goes down and Joven off to a fantastic sound. The only lane going well for Pacific is his bottom lane and it's not even going that well. Beastmaster got the first blood. Beastmaster is actually farming fairly well. Um, I imagine he's up to around 13 to 15 CS. Now he's sitting on 14 CS. And oh man. Right now, Beastmaster will get engaged on. We'll see a Burrow Strike going in. Get, definitely want to use that before you get to the tower. Crystal Node being popped. Beastmaster will go down. Sankin gets the kill. And with that, they want to maybe take down a tier one tower of their own. The push is happening at top. They want to get some of their own push happening. As we see, Rubik's level three. Reader at level three. And Invoker up to level seven. About it, level eight. This Invoker, just such a high level. Tiny, only level five. A three level advantage happening at mid lane practically and that is not going to be a very happy Tiny who needs to get that level 6, needs to get those boots up as well. He's really struggling and right now, I don't know what, I guess it was the Chaos Media just doing too much damage, maybe a Sunstrike as well. Because we were watching top, we didn't actually see how he went down there. But meanwhile, bottom lane, Beastmaster in bit of trouble is not quite level 6 yet. The Gank is coming in, Crystal Man going to get blocked off, Sankin going to come around from the side, does he have a TP? No he doesn't. Lycan though taking a lot of damage, he gets level 6, Lycan gets stunned, he's taking damage from Tau, the Axis will finish him off, they're going to go flying out, great kill from Reborn, what a play, he is playing so impressively now, he is in a bit of trouble, the Sand King, the Burrow Strike, did he just miss a Burrow Strike, what am I watching here, I don't know, but Reborn is absolutely juking the crap out of them, and now he is going to, whoop, puts his ball on the ground, going to send that back to base, he's scouting with it now as well, Sanking taking a lot of damage, he does have a Burrow Strike, he's going to go into Sandstorm, Axis go down, Sanking only gets hit by about half the damage here, and Beastmaster not going to be able to chase down that kill, Reborn, what a play, Yu Wei, absolutely wiping them out, although now he's in a bit of trouble, Lycan's come back in, see, Crystal Main does not have mana, meanwhile, top lane, Nikau goes down, the Weaver, the trial lane, getting a kill on the Death Prophet, Eye zone off to a fantastic start in all three lanes. Mid lane, Santino in trouble. He goes down again. Eye zone, Joven Sanity. He picks up his third kill of the game. He survives on rare HP. He's going to ball himself up. And meanwhile, bottom lane is not going well at all. Top lane as well. Eye zone winning on all three fronts. Off to a fantastic start as we're going to see them look to press their advantage, take some more towers, maybe get this tier one mid tower. Look to even pressure this tier two mid, mid tower. Uh, sorry, this tier two top tower is what I meant. And uh, the T1 mid tower, as we're going to see a bottle being used here. Invoker, actually, no, Rubik's going to take it. Rubik's going to use the invis rune, then give the bottle back to the invoker. So Rubik's saying, give me that invis. I can use it more than you. What great decision making from this iZone team. Really working well together as a team. Normally, you'd just see Invoker ball it up. But no, Rubik, because he's got an invis, he's going to go in. The median not landing. Oh, miscommunication. I was just talking about their great teamwork. And now, Invoker, stun, toss, under tower. He's going to be okay, but definitely a bit of miscommunication there. Sunstrike. Oh, wow. That got him down to about 50 HP. Almost getting the kill there. One more right click would have sealed the, sealed the deal. And oh, right now, iZone really playing very well there. Bit of miscommunication. Did manage to not get that tiny kill, but those sun strikes, the chaos meteors, the exot build coming out from this invoker, working wonders as top lane. Look at this Weaver's gold, 3k gold, straight relic, straight radiance coming up maybe. Although he is going to struggle, he can't really solo the Death Prophet without any regen. Uh, he's going to find himself being spammed down by carrion swarms, and that is not going to be a very happy camper if that is in fact the case. And we're going to see how he deals. He's heading towards mid lane. As mid lane, ooh, speaking of mid lane, we may have a quick save here. Uh, uh, bit of lag coming out as uh, we will have a save from the Observer. Beastmaster at bottom, drops down the roar. Rubik is there, drops a nuke. We'll have a Sunstrike as well. The Sunstrike coming. Invoker, Joven. Great communication from those guys. And meanwhile, mid lane, Tiny looking maybe for its stun. Toss combo, not going to find it. Invoker, two. Greater control over his hero. Some great awareness coming out from him. And there is your save. Weaver is absolutely massive. As Pacific, a bit of lag for those guys, but for the most part, it seems like it is on their end. Go is the call. 
Invoker KS. It's not really a KS. Well, it's a KS, but it's good for his team because Invoker gets gold. He gets XP as well. And meanwhile, his teammates get some golden XP just for the assist. And I think it is okay to use the Sunstrike there for that kill. Why the hell not? He's got plenty of mana. It's not really going to hurt him too much at mid lane. And not oh, meanwhile, there's a deafening blast with a Chaos Meter. One more right click. Joven gets another kill. He's up to a mega kill. What fantastic play from him. And he's picks up a Staff of Wizardry. It looks like he's going to go for a four Staff here. Could even go for a freaking Dagon if he wants to. Anything in the, in the world, Dota world, is possible for him. The world is his oyster. And he is going to be looking to continue his dominance at this mid lane. As right now, the max out Exhort Invoker just doing incredible amounts of damage. Beastmaster bottom does have three deaths, but he's having a very solid game because he is up against that hard try lane. And right now, Joven playing the game of his life as top lane. Trouble once again. Death Prophet going to find Weaver looking to take him out. Winner is going to get the kill with the power shot. No, Weaver not going for the rel relic. Did have 3k gold. Decides to pick up an ultimate orb with a ring of health. Going to be going for that fast Lincoln Sphere as bottom lane. Crystal Main once again looking for this Beastmaster. Boots are up though. Beastmaster with 950 HP does have a magic wand if they want to go on him as well. We'll give him a bit of HP regen. And Tiny coming in mid. Rubik is there. Does get scattered by this Observer Ward. Same goes for the winner. So it looks like the plan is foiled. Tiny going to be playing pretty defensive here. Does have a brace. It does not even have its boots at this point. And are they going to go in here? They're just going to right click down this tower a bit. Invoker has come. Bottom lane. The roar goes off. The chaos meter as well. That's going to be an easy kill. And Crystal Man in a lot of trouble as well. Those right clicks plus 97 damage. The sun strike gets the kill. Double kill for Joven. In comes Death Prophet with the ultimate. Sanking some Beastmaster may go down here. The carrion swarm uh, not going to be needed. It's actually the Death Prophet. The Exorcism getting the kill there. And now Invoker a bit on the back foot, but could look for a kill on this Sanking. Sanking is low. A sun strike will finish him off. And we all know that's going to be coming. He's going to be looking for this one. Where is Sanking going to hide? He is saying, being as unpredictable as possible with his movement. Looks like Invoker not going to go for the Sunstrike. Sanking should be able to walk his way home as Invoker would take some insane map awareness or, <laughs> or map hack, I should be saying, to actually hit this Sunstrike. With that said, I hope he does not hit this now. Otherwise, I'll get a, 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 a rage, rage of accusations going towards him. Windrunner. At mid, level 4 only, knows that Tiny now level 8 has a lot of killing power. He needs to be careful. The stun going to miss. The toss going off as well. And uh, looking for that combo there. Tiny going to have to bring that bottle back, get some more mana up. As right now, Pacific in a bit of trouble. Izone playing very, very well. What is Joven going for? I imagine it is going to be a 4 stuff. He's finished his 4 stuff. He's heading home. Going to heal himself up, then maybe look for another gank. Find another lane to go to. Lincoln Sphere is getting very, very close on this Weaver. Up to 250 gold. And we're going to see that coming in the near future, I imagine. Top River. Tiny and Crystal Maiden uh, lurking around. Beastmaster, though, he's got the Hawk up. He's also got the Vitality Booster and Eyes on. He's going to find the Crystal Maiden. That's a squishy-looking Crystal Maiden with the Cruel Beast. It's not a great Cruel Beast yet. It's actually going to be Frostbeam, but still Beastmaster with the right click damage. Gets the kill. Meanwhile, top lane, Tiny Palen goes down. There goes your Weaver. Do they have a dust for that? I don't actually know. I'm not sure whether or not Sankey had a dust or whether they just changed their stun. But meanwhile, mid lane, the T1 tower is what they want. Joven picks up another kill. The toss in. Not going to do much. Maybe he was trying to toss the Sankey there or maybe just trying to scare them off. Meanwhile, Invoker picks up a kill. Death Prophet going down. This Invoker, Joven is absolutely playing the game of his life. And Joven Voker is really working some magic here. Santino on the tiny. Two kills, four deaths did go very badly at mid lane. And speaking of badly, now he's going to get shackled in. The Sun Strike, the Nuke combo on the Sand King. And he steals the toss. Rubik steals the toss. He's looking for this Tiny. Tiny is low. Winner on a power shot. Not going to land. He does get blocked by some creeps here. Joven, though, does come in. Gets the tower. And now Izone find themselves up. 15 kills to 6. 1,300 gold on this Invoker. We'll get his next item up fairly soon. Depending on what he wants to go for. Could be an Agony Scepter. Could be just going for something like a drum of endurance as he does have that bracer. Top lane. Lycan actually popping the ultimate there. Wondering what he was looking to do there. Did not achieve all that much. Sunstrike was looking for him. Looks like he had to pop the ultimate just to escape certain death. But the gank is coming. Beastmaster is there with the hawk. He's going to get the roar down. Rubik has a nuke if near. The axes go down. Rubik with the nuke. Easy kill for those heroes. And Lycan being taken out. Another kill for Izone. They are getting further and further ahead. As uh, we will have a quick save again. Izone finding themselves in control. They've got the map control. They've got 
the superior item control as well as just pushing down more towers than their opponents yet to take a tower. Even despite the Death Prophet pick, no towers yet for Pacific. And that's going to be a conserve them. Windrunner is at bottom lane. Up against this Death Prophet, pretty hard lane. No bottle for this Windrunner. He's not doing the Bottle Crow. Has been playing as a support, so it's just going to be on her own with a Magic Wand in this lane. So it looks like um, we'll struggle. Maybe get like, some farm, some XP, and that's kind of what they're trying to do. Just get those level up Shackle Shots. But now Windrunner in trouble. Uh-oh, here comes a big ganking squad. Tiny Sand King. Windrunner going to spot it out. No, not going to be able to get out. The Suns, the Chain Suns. No, Windrunner! Oh, it does go down. Santino, I thought it was actually going to live. The Chaos Meteor, Crystal Maiden in the trees here should go down. Does not have a TP. Couple right clicks will seal the deal. There's a Colt now. Joven gets his godlike. 14 minutes in. Joven off to a fantastic start this game. And now as we go into the mid game, we'll see what he wants to do, what he wants to get. Tiny is looking to go back in though. He's got the Sand King with him. Maybe going to look for a toss in. Crop is there. The Hawk though does spot them out. And with that, Beastmaster maybe going to back off a little bit. As that Tiny deciding not to go for it. Uh-oh, four stuff in at bottom. They want to go on Tiny. Couple right clicks. They call now. Look at that physical damage. The toss in. The Beastmaster gets tossed in. Rolls the Tiny. He's going to go down. The Carrion Swarm, though. Beastmaster in a bit of trouble here. Sand King. Burrow Strike gets stolen. Rubik with the Burrow Strike gets a kill. Joven gets what, two. Joven gets three. Joven gets a beyond godlike streak. 15 minutes into the game. What a play from Joven Sanity as he does look to push down this T1 tower. He forces himself up. He wants this Crystal Maiden. He's got enough movement speed as well. Crystal Maiden. Oh, out duking the Invoker there. Invoker decides, okay, let's not chase. Let's get this tower. And Joven with a triple kill. What a absolutely sick Invoker play coming out from him. And you can see why Invoker used to be such a top tier pick. And here it was, last pick. Here it was, getting a kill on top. The Sunstrike finds the Lycan. Weaver, oh my gosh, Joven is absolutely out of control. And I think Pacific is saying, come on Joven, go easy, go play some Tetris or something instead. And the Deafening Blast with the Chaos Mirror. Actually, both of those spells do end up missing, but he does not even care at this point. Joven, Joven, Joven. <laughs> he does have a point booster. Could be going for the Aghanim Scepter here. He's bought something else by the looks of things. Uh, he's bought, actually, he's finished an Ag Scepter. 16 minutes in. Aghanim Scepter, four staff and phase boots, level 14. At 16 minutes, guys, this is as fat of an invoker as I have ever seen. 15 minutes, he is just looking out of control. And uh, he's also got 13 kills. Not a single death, only the one assist. He has been getting all these last hits, but. Hey, why the hell not? He's really using it to great effect. As Death Prophet, Raw goes down. Beastmaster with a DD and Sunstrike. Joven once again takes control of all these kills all across the map. He does not give a shit. He is just quite happy to take kill after kill. Keep the momentum going for his team as Tiny says, no, nope, I'm taking that branch. That branch is going to get taken out. And now Izone doing... Oh, we're going to find Pacific actually taking out Roshan, doing all they can to make the best of a very, very bad situation as the Vlad is up on the life, but still not the easiest of Roshans. Will Invoker get this? Guess this. Will Izone make something happen? They have got the Hawk. It's not flying in though. Actually, that's actually just a Vulture. They do spot out the Tiny there, using it just nice micro coming from the Beastmaster there, and it looks like Roshan may go down. Beastmaster has not realized yet, neither has Invoker. This is so risky. I can't believe they're doing this. There's two, three heroes right there. Rubik may even spot them out now. This is as risky as it comes. The Frostbite going to go down. Rubik just walks right past them, and they do not know. Luckily for Pacific, this could have gone so badly if they guessed where they were. Windrunner, power shot. Come on, Windrunner. Come on. Not going to happen, though. They will get the Roshan. And meanwhile, mid lane, Invoker drops down some nukes. And uh, with that, we see a 22-7 kill streak. As we will have another save, maybe. Oh man. <laughs> Invoker, what a player. Oh, I'm, I'm hearing it. He, he's Dendi level. Dendi level Invoker. And I, I would have to agree with the way he's playing right now. This is. This is Dendi status. Maybe even what, the amount of kills and dominance he's displaying is, is more than what you'd see coming out of Dendi from a normal game. Although I'd say this is no normal game for Joven. Joven is playing one of the best games of his life right now. And he is really 
controlling. He's up to 101 CS. He's got 14 kills. He's got Aghanim Scepter, four staff, level 15. Not a single death as well. Lycan just saying, screw this. We cannot fight against this Invoker. I'm going to go push bottom. And we are going to see this mid tier 2 tower. Going to get taken out. More gold going in. No, it's not. Death Prophet with the deny. Joven saying, oh man, I wanted that. That would have been my sheep stick or something. Probably would have had a sheep stick in about 20 minutes time, if not for that. And they are looking for the Sand King. Going to burrow strike out. In trouble. The power shot does land. The sun strike not going to hit this time. As meanwhile, bottom lane, Palang the Weaver denies the tower. And oh, they get the kill though. Froggy making sure of that. And now Lycan in trouble. Needs to buy a TP scroll. Are uh, they going to get to him before he TPs out? He will get a TP. He's going to use it. Power shot. Is there a shackle? Not going to be in time. It will follow him back to the base though. As it was mid-air. Almost actually making it in time. Where's that shackle at? There we go. And invoke up Perseverance. What is he going for? Lincoln Sphere, I suppose. I'm not quite sure what he'd need the Lincoln Sphere for. I mean, maybe... I mean, maybe the Frostbite is about all that's there. Could just be going for a Refresher even, if he wants to use the Chaos Deafening Blast combo twice in one team fight. We'll see just what he wants to go for soon with this Perseverance. I'm, actually, I would say Bloodstone. I think he's going to go for a Bloodstone. As uh, he is just absolutely out of control. If he can start getting some blood suit charges up, he'll become much tankier as well. He'll respawn faster if he does die. Although right now he has no plans of dying. That I can tell you. Lycan at mid. Looking to build a Necrobook maybe with this uh, Belt of Giant Strength. But I feel he just needs... I mean, I don't know. I feel there's no item that's going to help him out that much. If he goes for a BKB, the pure physical damage from Weaver as well as Invoke is going to take him out. If he go, and, I mean, they've even got the Beastmaster Aura to give them more attack speed, more damage. So if he can't really go BKB, he'll just be too squishy, just physical damage. But at the same time, Necrobook, he'll just get chained disabled. So he's going to need so much farm, so many items before he can, in fact, become effective as this bottom tier 3 tower is in trouble. It looks like that's what they want to go for. The raw, the Chaos Meter, they take out Santino. Sankin goes in with the stun. They want to get this Invoker. They've got the Aegis up still, I believe. Rubik Burrow strikes in. He has stolen that spell, and Sankin will drop. Rubik, with the help of Kells, the winner, I think, Power Shot finishing it off. And now this tier 3 tower will drop. Invoker making sure of that. May even sort of start switching to the Alacrity just for some additional pushing power. But right now he's happy. He's got a plus 130 damage. Lycan gets two towers at mid though. So some nice bit of rebuttal there coming from Lycan. Knowing, they can't, knowing he can't defend. Knowing he's best off just getting the hell out. Putting on some pressure. Doing a bit of counter pushing. And he's even going to maybe even pressure this tier 3 tower. Because they've already lost racks at bottom. There's not much they can do. At 20 minutes in we're seeing a racks go down. Beastmaster has a mech up as well for his team. Invoker level 16 now. Has 1600 gold and we are going to have a, another save. As Izone will back off. And Lycan has swung to top, so looking for another tower, looking for this tier 1 tower. Weaver is there though, has a Lincoln's. Lincoln's as well as 3.7k gold. We'll be going for that Radiance. We'll be looking to get that up as fast as possible. Meanwhile, Lycan behind this tower could see some pressure coming from this Weaver, although not really enough to probably kill the Lycan. Oh, Courier on the high ground. He's going to pop the ultimate. He's going to try to chase it. He's going to send it over the trees. Nice play from the uh, Weaver or whoever was using that. Reacting quickly, preventing Lycan from doing too much damage. And now Lycan forced to go on the run. The shapeshift is there. He's going to get hit by this swarm, but it looks like he's not going to be chased. He does have that Aegis. And now Invoke out Winner coming towards the top lane as well. But no, he's actually going to be chased a bit here. Weaver as well as Rubik going to come into this jungle here. They're not going to be able to get this kill. But Joven Man is just absolutely dominating this game. He's up to 2.3k gold, probably about 800 gold away from that Bloodstone. But no, he's going to pick up an ultimate orb, so it is going to be a Lincoln Sphere. I'm, I'm sort, of, sort of thinking, what is the Lincoln Sphere for? There's a Frostbite coming from Crystal Maiden. It doesn't block the Silence from Death Prophet. It doesn't block Carrion Swarm. It doesn't block Exus. It may be a Sanking Burrow Strike. There's only Sanking Burrow Strike and the Frostbite, which it's going to block. So, I mean, those are two annoying spells. It means he can be a bit aggressive and not get some by the Sanking maybe, but overall it's not an essential item. But still, it doesn't really matter at this point what he goes, I have to say. With that said, guys, I'm not sort of, I'm, I'm criticizing, but you can't really criticize when he's played this well and it's not even going to matter what he goes for. Um, I don't think it, I mean, it's not going to be a bad item, it's just an item which is going to do a whole lot of damage. And he may even, yeah, he could even split this Perseverance up and make a Sheepstick. He's got the ultimate orb, he could split the Perseverance up, get a Sheepstick, 
and we'll see what he wants to get. But right now, more importantly, this T3 tower is going to go down. Beastmaster is there, providing the aura, providing the mech as well for his team, and Invoker just the pure physical damage. Beastmaster gets initiated and forced to pop the mech. There's a roll on Tiny. Santino will go down. The Chaos Meteor bounces even further back. Crob taking a lot of damage. Sunstrike. Oh, the Beetle. It's going to get the Crob. One more tick. Oh, Crob goes down. Death Prophet goes down. Weaver gets the kill. That Sunstrike again. Joven has been spot on. He's going to get the melee racks and going to actually have to TP home. Lycan looking to do some counter pushing here. Weaver is there. They're going to get the double racks. Four racks are down. Izone may have made their way into the grand finals of this tournament with this four racks advantage. And right now, there's just so little Pacific can do. They gave him the Lycan. They were happy to give up that hero. They did not care about facing it, and it is paying off now. And it looks like they are going to make their way to the Grand Finals where they will await the winner of Dreams and MSI Evolution Gaming Team. But they still do have a last lane of Rax as a push. They still have the two towers protecting the Frozen Throne, which they have to destroy, and Invoker just happy to camp inside the enemy base here, not at all worried for his own life. And even this Lycan, who's had this Aegis for such a long time now. He's gone for a Necrobook 1. Uh, probably getting close to that Necrobook 3, I would say, by now. Ooh, there's a Necrobook recipe there. I think just needs another couple hundred gold. We'll have that Necrobook 3. But even with that, it's too little too late. Joven actually gets caught out a bit here. Four stuff away from the Epicenter. It looks like, oh, there's a Deathning Blast with a Chaos Meteor doing a lot of damage. And he is going to pop the Ghost Walk. Is there any vision? Sentry's dust. There's a Sentry. They will get the kill. The Beyond Godlike Streak. 24 minutes in. Gets taken out as he was on a 15 kill streak. Pacific get a bit of gold in their favor, but at this point, I don't know if it's going to matter. Weaver with a Radiance, and Weaver may just kill this Tiny. All the Death Prophet here does have enough damage, and there we go. Does pop the backtrack. Uh, I'm surprised not going for this kill. Uh, even the Tiny was quite low in HP there. Maybe worried about the stun toss combo. As we will have to wait. Invoker needs to uh, come back. Does have that Lincoln Sphere up now, but no buyback gold. Only 300 gold. And at 24 minutes, this is a damn long time to have to wait to respawn. He's waiting a good, a good sort of 50, 60 seconds. And we're only 24 minutes in. Tiny gets caught out. Does have the Blink Dagger. Sorry, Tiny catches one out. Uh, it looks like the Weaver going down there with the Blink Dagger up on that Tiny. And now we're going to force to back off. Tiny wants to go for this. We'll have a blink up soon. Does he have the combo? He's trying to get the toss back. Yeah. Raw going to come from Beastmaster. And now Winner will have a shackle shot. Tiny in trouble. Santino may have overextended. Met coming out from the Death Prophet. Going to keep Tiny alive a bit longer. Beastmaster taking a lot of damage. He has the mech. He pops it. And now Death Prophet in trouble. Sanking. Burrow Strike in. Will Rubik maybe steal the Burrow Strike again? That would be useful. He does get silenced though. And Death Prophet is on the run. Looking to escape. Nuke coming from Rubik. And it looks like they will manage to get out. Oh, what did he steal? Silence. Oh, not. I thought he maybe stole the Exorcism. That would have been absolutely ridiculous. It's just a silence. But still a very powerful and useful skill nonetheless, especially against heroes like this Sanking Rubik. Vitality boost, vitality boost, and <laughs> point boost. I'm not sure if he meant to do this, if he was trying to build a soul booster into a blood zone, or if he was just trying to get up enough, basically as much tankiness as possible. I mean, he's got a decent mana pool. He has already got the uh, energy booster from the arcane boots if he wants to split that up. So for the most part, it's not really too much of a concern for him as Beastmaster, Reborn, Yue, farming up. Looks like he's going to get... A, uh, no, he's going to go for, he's going to change Saga. He's, I think, I'm not sure whether those are his or not, but I thought he was maybe going to turn this Helm of Iron Will into a Veil of Discord, but it looks like he's just going for something different. But right now, man, <laughs> Rubik is collecting Dragon Balls. Okay. I see how it is. I see how it is. And uh, this mid racks is going to be under siege. They've smoked up. Pacific, no, they haven't got many chances left. We may even see them go try and pull off something really fancy, like Sanking, Epicenter with a toss in behind them, though. I think maybe being spotted out is the Lycan, who does have that Necrobook 3. Going to run right into this Weaver. Weaver going to maybe force him to use an ulti here. As, uh, nope, Lycan not going to be chased down. Does get taken down to half HP, and he is pretty squishy now without a BKB. Epicenter toss. I don't know if he, he actually used the Epicenter there. Doesn't look like he did. And now goes the Sun, sun Toss combo. Invoker still alive. Lycan goes in. Does take out the Invoker with the Necrobook 3. Nice start for Pacific, but they're losing heroes elsewhere. Beastmaster gets one. Now Rubik in trouble. The Lycan focusing down the Invoker so well now. And Rubik in trouble here. He's down to about 60 HP. The Lycan Wolves will get the kill. Weaver, though, is still alive. And even with Invoker down, the Weaver doing plenty of damage. Lycan does have Aegis. Will respawn here. Down goes the Swarm. Tiny may be in trouble. There's a Frostbite. It gets blocked by Lincoln's. 
followed up by Manvo, and they do have the Sentry Ward there. Lycan respawning now, no roar up, but Lycan taking a lot of damage. Weaver forced to maybe back off, could get, come back in. Sun toss combo, Weaver in the middle of things, trying to take out this Lycan. Couple more right clicks, should be able to do this, but there's a lot of damage on him. He's not gonna get it. Oh, he gets toss up, Sanking Boris right, not even gonna be near. Santino gets a kill, it's a team wide. Pacific bouncing back, find some kills. They are going to be happy with that one. And not to mention some kills. They get a courier kill as well. An extra 150, 170 gold-ish for their whole team. And it was all on the back of Santino's tiny. He's sort of redeeming himself for his earlier play at mid lane. But they've still got plenty of questions that need to be answered. The bottom lane, the top lane. Constantly going to be pushing in. And this is going to be so hard for Pacific to take a rack here. But they're going to go for Roshan by the looks of things. They've got the boots of travel up on Lycan even for the mobility. So really nice fight coming from Pacific. But at the same time, it, it's not over yet. It, oh, they're actually getting... What? what? They find Winner as well. Winner getting picked off there. And now, Rubik, you need to be careful. Just had one of your teammates get picked off. And this Mass Vitality Booster Strap may be coming to bite you in the ass as the nuke goes down, takes out some of those creeps. He is, is smoked, in fact. So maybe Rubik will get caught out here. And they're waiting. They want the Invoker again. Kills on this Invoker have been few and far, but they have, whenever they have come, they have really helped out this Pacific team more than anything else, more than any tower, more than even killing two or three other heroes. Just killing this Invoker is the number one priority, although soon Weaver is going to become a big problem. Even the Beastmaster with the pipe, the mech, Vanguard is so tanky and just going to cause a lot of problems in these team fights. And it looks like Eyes are not... They're not, they're not dazzled. They're not at all rattled. They're just going to push once again as far towards the mid lane. They know the pressure is there, and that's all they have to keep doing is pressuring their opponents. They've got the both bottom and top lanes pushing in, and now maybe the Scourge team. They've got everything up. They've got all their ultimates. They are ready to defend, but it's going to come down to eyes and maybe to position a bit better, maybe to wait for this pipe on Beastmaster. But right now, they're pretty content to push. They are going to be up against an Aegis once again on the Lycan, but they still feel they can make this happen as Lycan. Once again, I, I mean, everything sort of repeating itself as uh, we do see Lycan once again behind them on the high ground. Probably going to look for this Invoker, although Weaver is going to be another problem who will manage to take out some kills if left unwatched. Invoker, the Ford Spirits in front, he can just chip away at this tower with them. He doesn't even have to engage happily. We just continue to send those Ford Spirits in, do whatever damage he can. As we will see, Lycan in the jungle here does have those boots to travel. 1200 gold, needs to be careful. I don't know if he's been potted out, but Winner was sort of pretending to maybe sort of come around the side. And now the creeps entering the base, starting to chip away at these tier 4 towers. This could provide an opening for Izone to go in. And that is definitely a bit of a worry as Tiny is the one defending. He's not going to be ready to combo any heroes at mid yet. And the Ford Spirits are there doing some big damage. You see plus 80 with 80 damage already on that one Ford Spirit with the Alacrity. And that tower gets taken down to a bit below half HP. Sankin gets tossed in, then tries to burrow his way back into base. Still has a good six, seven hundred gold away from his blink dagger. And Weaver is looking to be very, very far. I'm getting more and more items up as time goes on. Beastmaster, still no pipe though. And we will see this tier three middle tower being taken out here. Epicenter gets popped on the side. They're looking for the invoker. Lycan is there. If they can get this invoker, it'll be such a great tool. The Lycan, the, the roar goes on tiny. Probably want to save it for the invoker. For, sorry, for the Lycan. Lycan gets the kill buyback though. This time Joven has a second life. He's gone down, but he comes back up. Sanking still in the middle. Ruby in trouble will go down. Lycan doing a lot of damage. Xyle really doing. A, causing some problems here, and Weaver meanwhile will go down as well. The silence from Death Prophet, Pacific are holding. Somehow, they are still in this game. They are not giving up, and they are going to fight till the very last breath as Tiny, looking for this Beastmaster, is going to hit the stun. Toss as well, looking for the toss back. The Sunstrike going to miss. Sankin coming in, does hit that, but look at this Beastmaster, so damn tanky, and now Tiny is on the run as they're going to maybe chain tag, go for this Sankey. Burrow Strike coming from Rubik, and Sankin should go down. He does in fact, do so as Tiny forced to blink his way out. Winner on the chase. They have lost Weaver, but now the Scourge team could be in trouble. No Exorcism, no Epicenter. Two ultimates missing. They do have the Lycan ulti. They will be have the SK who can maybe blink and try stun down the Invoker. They need to focus in, but this Rax completely vulnerable. Already taking a little bit of damage, probably from that Weaver there. And Tiny 
Look at this, he's red HP, he can't defend, he's gonna go in with a combo, knows he has to defend, I think he probably has buyback, he's saying, okay, let's go in, I've got buyback, we're just having to, we have to fight this, curse me, you're going to go down, but right now, they don't even care too much, they just want to get this Rax, the Ford Spirits are focusing down the Rax, the Rax getting down to about 300 HP, they need to get rid of these Ford Spirits, they are focusing down the great Shuggle Shot, Lycan and Tiny shackled together, and the Rax, 150 HP, but meanwhile, these tier 4 towers going down, they are going to lose at least one, maybe even both here, and mid lane, we've got an engagement there. Invoker, 50 HP, pops the Ghost Walk, gonna come back, and we're gonna see him pick up some kills as well. Oh, Invoker, what great control. Joven, insane play from him, and Lycan in trouble. Will drop the Aegis, loses that, and now maybe gonna die a second time. Is the Roar up? Is anything to lock him down? No Roar. He does have the ultimate. He's gonna manage, manage to pop that, but the Cold Snap as well. And he's not going to be able to go back in. Yes, he is. He's looking for the Rubik or the Invoker. There goes the Swarm. Is there enough disables? He gets two instantly. He one-shots both the both Rubik and Invoker and then will get away with his life. Bit of a mistake. They should probably have just... Um, oh, that's definitely a mistake right there. He probably probably Invoker should have just backed off. But then Lycan goes and dies after getting those two kills. And it doesn't look like he has buyback. And now this Rack's completely vulnerable. Lycan only with 600 gold. Bought a Hyperstone. And, oh no, without this Lycan, there goes the Sand King, Epicenter, gonna slow down this push. Beastmaster taking a lot of damage, but all they have to do is get in there, right click the rack, the Ford Spirits are there, the Ford Spirits will do it, and meanwhile, the Throne constantly under siege, doing damage to these tier 4 towers, they've already lost one, they're getting close to losing a second, Death Prophet doing all she can to keep it alive, going for the pipe, going for the mech, and now Pacific Revitalize are down to their last couple of breaths, they've got just the range barracks, they've got a tiniest bit of HP left on their final tower, and this is getting a bit hard, a bit of an uphill battle for them, as we will see Tiny shackled at mid, trying to chase down this winner, and a winner who is now going on the run, a bit of chase cam action going, will earn herself up, and it looks like the chase will end as they do venture off the wrong direction, winner looking to just stay bottom, be able to keep on putting pressure onto these lanes, and really do some serious damage here. Right now, mid lane, Tiny has got the four stuff up with his Blink Dagger. Weaver gets one kill, takes out EMZ the CM, and now Tiny getting spotted out by the Swarm as well. This base is being slowly torn apart. As we will see, Lycan trying to keep these lanes pushed out. Meanwhile, Tiny does go down, Weaver and Winrunner with a Sunstrike. Joven picks up another Sunstrike kill. He has slowed down up to 18 kills, four dead. At one point in the game, he was 15 kills with not a single death. He had Aghanim Scepter at like 16 minutes with a 4 staff. At 16 minutes, he had 4 staff, Phase Boots, and Aghanim Scepter. And it looks like Pacific are going to call GG. Tiny is down. So is the Crystal Main. Lycan is up, but it looks like they can focus down this Rax. And with that, Mega Creeps will come. And it's just too much pressure. Pacific cannot hold all the lanes. It is going to be GG by the looks of things. As, uh, whoopsie daisy, that was not meant to pop up. But it looks like, yes, Pacific will fall down. They're going to go into the third place deciding match and Izone are going to be in the grand finals looking to make their mark there as Invoker chasing on in with the Crystal Maiden. We're going to see Weaver Radiance pick up some more kills and now the throne will go down. Pacific, they put up a good fight. They held on even losing early Raxus but in the end it came down to Joven. Joven Sanity on the Invoker, absolutely wreaking havoc, destroying Tiny at mid with the Deafening Blast, the Chaos Media combo, the Sun Strikes at bottom and top lane, even on mid lane on the Tiny, was spot on, and it was just too much in such a short amount of time, playing absolutely fantastically as Invoker. And we're gonna get into a quick break now, guys, as your next match, I believe, is gonna be the third place to sign. So we're gonna have another match with Pacific, up against the loser of Dreams and MSI. And then after that, we're going to have the Grand Finals. So guys, stay with, stay with us, stay tuned in. We're going to be going to a quick break. Anyways, guys, be right back.